not any thoughts right now when I'm about to do this. Yeah. Three changes off the top of your head is pretty big. More heroes would be one for me. More options. Uh, no abilities. We've got to concentrate. It's serious business. But those are good suggestions. I'm going to die. Ugh. Oh, the parfum. Go, go, go. Okay, we're past that bit. Can we get past the pigs? Yes, we can. We found a way. The pigs have been surpassed. On to number three. This should be Soda Poppin's new map, really. Not that filthy tower survivors. That's pretty close with the sheep. I think I might get killed by the cat part. Oh, there we go. That was close with the harpy. Got to follow the shadows and the harpy. Well, oh, I don't like that. That looked rigged. Trying to get in there. There it is. This bit, I never know how to 100% do it. So I just kind of make an educated guess as to when you can go. to go fast. Oh, thank you, Marnifer. This bit you can always just go down the bottom right here. Thank you very much, Marnifer. That's very kind of you. And now we'll pass this bit. There it is. Here we go. Skeletons can be trickier than they look. Wait for it. I don't know if I'll make that. I have to stand like here, I think. I think I should have gone a bit quicker, but just about. This is almost the perfect map. Ah! Oh, I clicked. Yeah, this is tricky. I clicked where the door was and it made me go back on myself. So that could have been a non-death, but you always get a bit of jank. It wouldn't be right if there wasn't some jank. Right, we got past the jank now. Okay, and we're on to here. And there it is. I kind of did that without any deaths, but... Yeah, there was a death, to be fair. It was the door that caught me. Like, I clicked to go over here, and it clicked on the door, and then my character was like, I can't go through that door, so I'm going to go back on myself, and it made me walk into the priest. So then there's Overclocked. He's coming through. Uh, yeah, he's got it. Wait, who's next? we got Chichoff over here. And there's Neck. That's the bloody murder. I wonder how old this map is. I know I've had this map for a really long time. Chichov taking the path. It's safe to go down there. I don't think I've ever died just going straight down the bottom. There's a few tricky bits. Like if you died on this bit over here, that's quite a bit to go through before you get to the next bit. You go and ball in for it. You can ball through some bits because you're quite close to the spawn point. So you can always be quite aggressive if you don't worry too much about losing lives. Watch out. Nick's got past this bit. Follow the bottom, Nick. Ah. Oh. Oh 
<laughs> the skeleton. And now you're back there. You stop trying after dying two times in a row, clicking on a player. Yeah, you can click on another player in this as well. There are quite a few things you can click on. Some of these maps, what they do is they make it so that everything is untargetable. So that way you can't accidentally click on things. So for example, that door, I wouldn't be able to accidentally click on that door, which would not make my character like go back on himself because of pathing and how it works. But I think it's really good, this map. It's just such a short and sweet little map, you know? It's really well done. It doesn't lag or anything like that. What was my ping? I had 27 ping on that, so I wasn't too bad. That's much better than what I normally have, which is probably why I did better. Just always be clicking. Always be predicting in your skull, in your head, where the mobs are going to be by the time you're clicking to those locations, and always be readjusting your clicks. Nice. That was a little loop-the-loop. -loop. This bit... I find easiest to go here and then judge when to press the stop button. The main thing you need for maps like this is the S button, the stop. So you move and then you press S when you need to, to stop your character, jar it and then move again as soon as it's safe to do it. Come on, Nick. Let's go. Blast through. Chichos made it. And then there's Nick. Can Nick... Do what needs to be done. Oh, he's going. He's going. Give yourself plenty of time with the skeletons. How's he done that, Colossal Fish? Oh! That skeleton politely waited for you there. This is good. Wait for the next skeleton, and then you're on the last... Oh my gosh, he just went right through that. That was safe to do, judging by the path in that he had, but it looked dangerous. By being based, um, <laughs> make his he have to make his own bank, like that guy in that uh, movie. He did it. That was a pretty heartwarming film. Well done, everyone. Yeah, I was gonna see who. Oh no, to be fair, he pulled back. Let's see which one is insecure enough. I oh, know Overclock did actually go. So, okay, Overclock's the most insecure because he felt like he had to get in there. Just checking who the most insecure one was. That's the that's the rule of thumb. So, Overclock is the most insecure, then Chitch off, and then it's between me and Nick after that. That's one way. I made some rhubarb earlier. Not today, but the other day. It was really nice. I, uh,. Was going for a walk. I'm going to go for a walk in a moment after this, but I go for a walk normally in the evenings if I can. Sometimes a bit of a jog, but probably not too much because I don't want to break my shins because I'm not very good at jogging. I need to build it up, but anyway. Outside someone's house, there was like free rhubarb. These like these stalks that they must have like grown in their home garden or something like that. And they had like 10 stalks or something, so I took a couple of them. And uh, yeah, all you have to do is, you know, obviously wash it. And then chop it into sort of like, you know, finger long slices or whatnot. And then you quarter them. So then you slice through the middle and then slice them again sort of thing. So they're in little, you know, they look like little fingers or whatever. And um, once you've done that, then you put it in a baking tray or, you know, sort of an oven dish. And you need apparently 100 grams of sugar for every 500 grams of rhubarb and two stalks when they cut them up basically came to 500 grams so I used 100 grams of sugar pretty much spread it over it it felt like a bit much to be honest the sugar but that's what it said so I did it because apparently they're kind of bitter if you have it as they naturally are and um yeah took a longer time to cook than I was hoping because it's supposed to be like 15 minutes but it took a much longer time for it to stew and get going and then had it and I was like I was really suspicious. I was thinking this is probably not going to taste that great. I'm pretty sure, but it was really nice. It was just like kind of like an apple stew or something like that. But obviously rhubarb. It had a lot of flavour to it. It was like really punchy. I was like, oh, I was pleasantly surprised. 
it wasn't like the sugar necessarily that made it. I think the sugar just stops it from being tart. Obviously, the sugar helps to make it taste nice because I wasn't really tasting the sugar. It wasn't like, you know, when you eat some sweets and stuff like that, you eat loads of sugar. You can taste the sugar on what you're eating. That's what's making the flavor. This was not more... The, the flavor was coming from the rhubarb itself. Yeah, it was very good. So there's my story about the rhubarb. So I'll go for another walk and I'll see if anyone else is leaving some random thing that they've grown from the garden outside for free.